Ford. <clears throat> in these times of blinding occupations, legends seem unreal. A dream or astral experience projected onto life, and yet the innocence of old legends takes hold and literally reminds us. Myth becomes lost science, <clears throat> legend lost history, and poetry lingering as traces left over from the previous universe when sound and not stocks and bonds was counted in pulsar exchange of stars. Of course, there's no going back. Prose remains our natural rhythm of daily speech and no mere cadence these days could ever set us into a deep, enchanted trance. What remains to haunt and unsettle us for a moment is the stronger image. As children raised on movies and TV, the image takes hold of us, not in trance, but in something more like a memory of another life, hopelessly erased. For instance, take the white stag with antlers of radiant light. It makes the story, doesn't it? But you cannot tell me why. That has now become the work of poets. They're not to enchant or fall into trance like bards, but serve as art historians of images that can help producers make better movies to amuse the public and preserve the state of entertainment. The great white stag with its antlers of light is the very same one you see engraved on the old Celtic Gundestrop cauldron, where Keranos, lord of the animals, sits with closed eyes in meditative trance and holds the serpent in his good left hand, the magic silver torque in his right. The white stag is drawn smiling to the torque. That's the a silver ring that the Celts would wear around their neck. The white stag is drawn, smiling to the torque. The resonating racks of man and deer exchange knowledge as waves of sound ringing in the silver torque and encircling, encircled snake. Understand by this that King Charlemagne is more wise shaman than politician. Both the stag and the snake appear, you see, in the ancient legend, and both grant him knowledge of time and the deep foundation of kingdoms, temples, and the times to come. Do you know that if you stand in Nara and ask why the deer are allowed to graze in great numbers within the temple walls, the Shinto priests say it is to honor the white deer upon which the ancient gods first descended from heaven to Japan. Do you know that the Mexican huichol in peyote trance sees this same great stag and in pictures they make with colored yarn show shaman and stag in conversation? I could go on to speak of Hittite stags, Mesopotamian cylinder seals, but won't, since that would be academic. But it was this great white stag with radiant antlers of astral light that led Hildegard and Bertha away from their high castle to the holy place where the Frau Munster cloister stands today, which is just across the rear in the street. The cathedral is here and the Frau Munster is here. And if you've ever been there on your M terms, that's where the Chagall stained glass windows are. If you cross the Munsterbrücke and stand by the statue of Waldman with his axe, you will see between the Stadthaus and church an iron gate leading to a cloister. Cross the street and go into the cloister, and there you will find Bodmer's paintings of the white stag and the serpent that came to test the judgment of King Charlemagne. But there's more to this old story than what you see so realistically expressed in Heimat religious paintings. And all that has to do with the nature of time and the kairos of religions. Kairos is a Greek word for appropriate season of action when a certain era is overlighted by an angel of time, a zeitgeist in, in German. And all that has to do with the nature of time and the kairos of religions, for each is bound to a season of time in which its worship derives its power. The serpent is an image you can track all the way back to old Stone Age Europe and forward to the art of William Blake. It is known in many iconic forms from the staff of Osiris 
the snake, Moses, set upon a rod in Sinai, the caduceus of Greek medicine, the plumed serpent of Quetzalcoatl, the kundalini of Vedic yogis, the dance of crane and snake in Tai Chi Tuan, or bird and snake on inverted anchor as emblem of the chemical wedding for Rosicrucian texts in Germany. No matter in which culture it appears, it remains the emblem of the three brains, spinal, limbic, and cortical, and their esoteric transformation in light. For the old Europe, Gambutas dug up, the snake is the mystery religion, the closed teachings of initiation that are not taught in churches and school, but only go from sage to hit, hidden sage, the eggs of the serpent, like Yeats's crop of mummy wheat, express the old passing its lineage on to another age, a new kairos in which new stars will pulse, changing the hidden dark environment for which the pl planets are merely dishes that pass on the energy of the stars. The poison toad that broods upon the eggs means the old mysteries have been taken over and grown toxic turned by false parentage to a life kept down in mud and never to turn from snake into bird. This is also an emblem of the race of man and how we came out of starlight, what were captured by the local spirits of the elemental earth and had our parentage erased and reconscripted. So here the old mystery religion can no longer serve the time. The serpent knows it is the kairos of Christendom its platonic month of 2,000 years that must parent the children of the snake. Charlemagne as Celtic shaman is wise and in the legend of Kernano, lineage of Kernanos, he mediates between snake and stag. Passing the test of the serpent, the king ensures the life of three eggs, three empires to come, Aachen, London, and Washington. And with each an esoteric teaching, Celtic, Rosicrucian, and Masonic, the wine cup placed before King Charlemagne comes from Melchizedek and was passed on to become the San Graal of Jesus Christ. The ring of the snake is the zodiac, the jewel, that twelfth part allotted to Christendom's Kairos of 2,000 years. But that time has passed, and now new stars Nova with a new environment the three old religions of Abraham in seizures of fundamentalist zeal have been adopted by the poison toad. As I write this, the bells of the Munster begin to ring, and I who at 60 from a life of apocalyptic dread driving along the San Andreas Fault have been brought back here to old Celtic tracks of legends and images of lost time. Know that my life will not see one event of history give more confirmation than the sunlight upon a sculptured crown. Or these bells, these Iron Age symbols of invisible worlds of stellar sound. Thank you.